Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Student, this is uh, Park Swayze Grade 10 and uh, we will discuss the table of contents, topics, history of Pakistan part 2, uh, Pakistan in world affairs and economic development, four number chapters, Pakistan's population, society and culture. So before starting the chapter, we will briefly give you outline of this uh, Zulfikarli Bhutto era. So 1971 to 73 Zulfikarli Bhutto was the president of Pakistan in 1973 to 78 Fazal Lahi Chaudhry became the president and Zulfikarli Bhutto became the prime minister. In 1978 to 88 Muhammad Ziaul Haq became the president of Pakistan. So Zulfikarli Bhutto 1971 to 77. So 3rd January 1972 economic reform order nationalization of key industries. 10 February 1972 labor policies worker share profit pension and insurance. 1st March 1972 land reforms. 21st April 1972 martial law lifted. 22nd July 1972 Simla agreement with India after 1971 war 12th of April 1973 new constitution passed 14th of April 1973 Bhutto elected Prime Minister 1st January 1973 banks nationalized 7 March 1977 general elections 19 April state of emergency declared 5th July Bhutto arrested and 7 July constitution suspended and martial law imposed now <coughs> we will study the background of Zulfikarli Bhutto's era so background in the elections conducted by General Ahiya Khan in 1972 political parties emerged as the major players on the political scene in east pakistan awami league carried the day while pakistan people's party won in west pakistan so here the 1970 election conducted by general yaha khan were the uh, uh, fairest elections in the history of pakistan two predict major political parties were uh, contested these elections so in East Pakistan, uh, she, uh, Sheikh Mujib Rahman uh, and his party Imami League emerged as the majority party. While in West Pakistan, Pakistan People's Party headed by Zulfikar Ali Bhutto emerged as a majority party. So now there is a struggle for power continues to so differences emerge between the two parties and it became increasingly difficult to form government and the deadlock led to the secession of East Pakistan in December 1971. So uh, the condition became worse and then martial law was imposed and war was declared. So India also indulged uh, herself into the war and directly confronted uh, Pakistan in December 1971. Uh, Bangladesh became a new country and East Pakistan debacled. Soon afterwards, General Yahya resigned and handed over the government to Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, the leader of Pakistan People's Party. So the government of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto 1970-77. On December 28, 1971, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto took over as the country's first martial law civilian administrator. So martial law remained in force till April 20th 1972. Here on December 71, General Yahya Khan given the uh, are handed over the powers to Zulfikar Ali Bhutto as he was a majority uh, party leaders in West Pakistan. So he was the first ever civilian martial administrator in the history of Pakistan. Martial law remained uh, in force till April 20th 1972. The circumstances under which he had to work were demanding. So these circumstances, these conditions were very tough for the new government. In the 1971 war with India, India had taken more than 93,000 prisoners, mostly military personnel. 
but also civilian from West Pakistan. In this war, Indian Army forces captured 93,000 of our soldiers plus 5,000 square kilometers of the area from Pakistan. So, ensuring their freedom and bringing them back home was a pressing issue. It's what very hard to do this to extricate the nation from the despair and despondency into which it had fallen in the wake of defeat and the fall of East Pakistan and to inculcate in the masses the spirit of reconstruction was another challenging task before the government. Now Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was the leader who can um, brought out who, who brought out Pakistan from this despondency and despair situation and he had given the masses a spirit of reconstruction so this was a very uh, hard task for the new government as civilian martial administrator Zulfikar Ali Bhutto had extensive powers as he was a civilian martial administrator so he had vast powers in exercise of these power he appointed his own men as governors in all the four provinces of the country so uh, to uh, implement his agenda or program Zulfikar Ali Bhutto taken his own men as governors of the four provinces they said Mumtaz Ali Bhutto in Sin, Hayat Muhammad Khan Shir Pao in the then NWAP Northwestern Frontier Province present day KPK Ghulam Mustafa Kar in Punjab and Ghaus Baksh Risani in Balochistan. In December, his government announced the termination of grants to the heads of all the princely states and cancelled the passports of many capitalists with the view to preventing them from transferring their capital from the country. So December in December 1971, his government, Zulfikarli government announced uh, to stop the grants to the princely states. Princely states, th these states are those states um, which you have studied in uh, class 9, uh, 550, 560 states and cancel the passports of many capitalists uh, and uh, cancel he uh, and he cancel the passports of many capitalists with the view to prevent them from transferring their ca capital abroad. In March 1972, more than 313 civil servants were fired in order to make bureaucracy work according to the um, according. So, in March 1972, 313 uh, civil servants were fired. Farek kiya gaya In the um, in allegations of corruption, bureaucracy. Bureaucracy means bureau mean table and crazy mean rule. So bureaucracy rule of the table. And the main objective of this act was to uh, subdue the powerful bureaucracy. Reforms undertaken by Bhutto government, first as civilian martial administrator and later as a prime minister, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto attempted to exercise his unlimited powers for introduction of reforms in the country in accordance with the manifesto of his party. Some of the reforms undertaken during his regime and describe, are described below. So as he was a socialist, he wanted to distribute all the resources of the wealth equally amongst the people. So that's why he implemented his agenda and conduct these reforms. Number one, economic reforms following the spirit of his party manifesto, Manshur. A, many essential commodities were subsidized. <coughs> commodities, Asha, subsidized. Matlab, unka rate kam kiya gaya. Farmers were provided with seeds, fertilizers and tractor and subsidized rates. Similarly, agriculture produce was procured from the farmers on preferential rates okay procured mean kharidna preferential rates means tarjihi nar so the move the, the the main objective of this move was to encourage uh, the farmers so that they get benefits the the pay and benefits of the government service were revised and some uniformity was ensured by introducing 22 scales now the government of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto uh, give uh, change the pay and benefits uh, of the servants and give them 22 scales like uh, scale 16, grade 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 and 22 so to give them some uniformity loan facilities were provided to employees prisoners were likewise increased 
pension were likewise increased the children of low salary employees were exempted from paying fee said state run educational institutions so those people who are poor were uh, exempted from school fees at uh, educational institutions state run educational institution employees recreational facilities were improved similarly mulazimin ki jo tafrihi aur dusre jo sahuliyat the usko behtar banaya gaya in case of pensioner's death his widow was entitled to draw the pension like other government servants police employees were also given various french benefits french benefits mean to give them more benefits marat now we come down to labor reforms so this was the first time that a government conducted labor reforms for the well being of the labor of workmen workforce so during the government of zulfikar ali bhutto labor legislation was enacted for the first time in the history of pakistan safeguarding the fundamental rights of the workers and ensuring them certain benefits this move was actually for safeguarding and secure to secure the job security to uh, of the worker and to secure the fundamental rights of the workers efforts were made to prevent the exploitation of the working classes at the hands of the capitalist similarly capitalists were bound to not to exploit the work class so workers were entitled to free medical care and compensation in case of injury in case of injury the workers were entitled haqdar qarar dena to get medical treatment and compensation muawaza dena agar unko kahin pe chot lag jaye they were given the right to overtime and paying the bonus was mandatory mandatory means zaruri so uh, if uh, uh, the workforce factory a mill gives more production so uh, it was the the the, uh, the capitalist or the industrialist were bound to give bonus to the labor class labor movements and trade unions were granted more protection old age men a pension and group insurance for the laborers were made obligatory lazmi qarar dena so workers work workers were protected against the prill summary of dismissal at the hands of the employers they were given the job security and were protected against the prill dismiss bagair kisi wajah se kisi mulazim ko nikal dena ab sarmayadaron ko jo industrialist the ya malikan the usko roka gaya now industries in ordinance in 1972 envisaged the nationalization of certain industry nationalization is a process in which the private sector comes under direct control of the state these included iron and steel industry basic metallurgy heavy engineering automobile and tractor assembling plants heavy electrical engineering plants and oil and gas refineries so 20 such how many what was the number 20 such industries in this sector was nationalized while the policy of nationalization was carried out with regard to the domestic investment foreign enterprises operating in the country were not interfered with only the domestic investors were disturbed with this move the foreign enterprises operating in the country were not interfered with unme koi mudakhilat nahi ki gayi so the industrial reforms brought the economy more directly under the state control these reform industrial reforms brought the economy directly under the state control and the state control was widened over these industries as the investors were not guaranteed any protection they slowed down the pace of investment in the industrial sector now its repercussion were that that investors were shying uh, to invest in pakistan especially industrial sector life insurance and banking all the insurance companies working in the country were nationalized on march 19 1972 all these were merged to form state life insurance corporation in november of the same year in november 1972 all the a uh, state uh, life insurance uh, the insurance companies were brought under state life insurance corporation in november 1972 through a presidential order all the banks operating in the country were nationalized and were put under the control of the state bank of pakistan in may 19 1972 similarly all the banks working in the uh, uh, country were brought under the control of the state bank this move 
did not help the functionaries of these banks to improve their performance, rather deteriorated. This move, this effort of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, this policy of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, did not help the banks to improve their performance. Rather, the condition of these banks became worse. Now we come down to our educational reforms. So for making education accessible to the common citizen of the country, Bhutto government nationalized educational institutions. Free education was provided in schools. They were nationalized. However, this policy failed in attaining its objectives. For making education accessible to the common man, Bhutto government nationalized all those institutions running in the country and brought these institution under the state control. Free education was provided in all the school colleges that were nationalized. However, this policy failed. This was because some educational institutions with high standard of education were left in the hand of uh, private hands. And this, this policy uh, w uh, became a failure because some educational institutions that were uh, private educational institutions were left in private hands which widened the class differences in the educational institutions. Now we come down to word agriculture reforms. On March 1st, 1972, Bhutto's government proclaimed the following agriculture reforms. The upper limit of the land owners was reduced from 500 acres to for, irrig for irrigated land and 1000 acres for arid land to 150 acres irrigated and 300 acres for arid land respectively. Now he conducted these uh, uh, agriculture reforms in order to, uh, to brought the uncultivated land into work. So for this uh, purpose he uh, he he, he uh, specified a limit of land ownership and that was 500 acres for irrigated land and 1000 acres for arid land to 150 acres for irrigated and 300 acres for arid land respectively. Land in excess of these limits was taken over from the owners and distributed free among the peasants. If somebody has um, more land than the upper limits then the government confiscated it and given to the peasants. Eviction of the tenants were prohibited. Similarly, eviction be dakhli, jo mazare te ya per jo zamindar ke saan te, usko mangnu karar diya gaya. Only under certain specified conditions they could be evicted from their lands. In case of the sale and land, the tenants' right to purchase was given primacy. Similarly, if if somebody want to sell his land, then the tenant's right was uh, given more privacy. The supply of seed and irrigation water fell under the responsibility of the owner. Similarly, the, uh, the, the farmer the farmer was um, encouraged and the owner was bound to uh, pay for the seeds and irrigation water. Okay, before the 1977 election on January 5th, Bhutto announced a second phase of agriculture and land reforms, but these could not be implemented. 